segment is not a politically correct in segment. which we find ourselves today until we admit that there are just lots of dumb people and some of them vote and they don't understand anything and they're not going to understand anything so that a solution to the current problem is going to require uh, um, it's going to have to be a solution that doesn't include them all right part of its cultural that's just a reality part of it is a class issue part of it is because education and thinking itself have been stigmatized and smeared as liberal nonsense i'll give you some examples trump's trade bloviating um, if you believe a con man who knows nothing about trade that he's going to fix the problem and eliminate the trade deficit and then you see the numbers that the trade deficit is up despite all of his negotiations and the tariffs and everything else. I know the human being, I know the human being, I know the human being and fish can coexist peacefully. At a certain point, a person who is informed and capable of critical thinking says, you know what? Uh, he lied and he's a con man and I can't support him anymore. Uh, the tax cuts for middle America, we were told everybody's everybody's getting a tax cut. And now you have, as I told you last week, Republicans furious on Twitter about what they see as tax increases. Some of them are actually tax increases because they were duped. Others don't understand that your refund doesn't actually tell you what your total tax liability was. It's because they're just not knowledgeable and we're not going to be able to inform them. We're going to have to find a solution that doesn't include these people. Uh, Trump building a wall with Mexico that Mexico will pay for. That was never going to happen, right? Th there was never going to be a wall built across the U.S.-Mexico border that Mexico was going to pay for. And it's also clear, according to engineers, as we looked at in detail two weeks ago, that there's not going to be a wall built, period, across the entire U.S.-Mexico. Clearly, is the question asked, are, is our children learning? Too many good docs are getting out of business. Too many OBGYNs aren't able to practice their, their love with women all across the country. In my state of the, my state of the union, or state, my speech to the nation, whatever you want to call it, speech to the nation. <laughs> the situation in which we find ourselves today, until we admit that there are just lots of dumb people and some of them vote and they don't understand anything and they're not going to understand anything so that a solution to the current problem is going to require uh um it's going to have to be a solution that doesn't include them all right part of its cultural that's just a reality part of it is a class issue part of it is because education and thinking itself have been stigmatized and smeared as liberal nonsense i'll give you some examples if you're a single mother with two children which is the toughest job in America, as far as I'm concerned. And you're working hard to put food on your family. <laughs> ...and smeared as liberal nonsense. Now we go through the magic of the four-second cross dissolve to the little country of Pottsylvania. Little but mean. Gentlemen, we must find a way to make the name of Pottsylvania feared and hated throughout the world. Yes! There's an old saying in Tennessee, I know it's in Texas, probably in Tennessee, that says, fool me once, shame on... Shame on you. <laughs> if fool me, we can't get fooled again. Uh, the tax cuts for middle America. We were told everybody's, everybody's getting a tax cut. And now you have, as I told you last week, Republicans furious on Twitter about what they see as tax increases. Some of them are actually tax increases because they were duped. Others don't understand that your refund doesn't actually tell you what your total tax liability was. It's because they're just not knowledgeable and we're not going to be able to inform them. We're going to have to find a solution that doesn't include these people. But why? Why? Look at it this way. Does we make things? No. no. Do we have any art or culture? No. no. What is the only thing we got plenty of? Nothing. No. Mean. We have more mean per square inch than other countries have in a square mile. And so? So we got to export mean to every other country. But to do that? Yes. Pottsylvania will declare war on everybody. Have Trumpists who continue believing it, either because of cognitive dissonance or, as I'm increasingly convinced, simply ignorance. Um, believing in the idea of tax cuts for the rich as good for the country. 
we saw that the tax cuts for the rich uh, under Reagan and the exact same thing is happening under Donald Trump. At a certain point, you have to say it's not just tribalism, it's also ignorance. It's when you have a system that makes it easier to get a gun than to drive a car, this is simply inconceivable in most developed countries. The world is aghast at this, but there's a bunch of people who are just not smart enough to realize how crazy it is. How about this death ray machine, Phyllis Leader? Let's see. You idiot, he doesn't even face them. Thank goodness. What? I, I mean, thank badness. Yes, gentlemen, I call it goof gas. Goof, goof gas. gas? Yes, one whiff, you're completely stupid. Hmm, let's test it. But anybody could beat us. Yes, besides being mean, we're all cowards. Now, Gerhard, do you think I'm the handsomest, kindest man in Pennsylvania? Of course not, you're a mean, ugly schnook. Put that man under arrest! Then what country do we turn into nitwits first? Mm, let's pick an easy one. The U.S. of A. Um, and I'm really gratified that I've, I feel like I've made a big difference. I, I've, I've accomplished much of what I wanted to do. The president's given us this chance to get a lot done, which we've gotten a lot done. I think a lot of people would understand that. I, I know that you've talked about you know, entitlement reform being one of those missed opportunities, but yeah. a big one. I mean, CBO just yeah. announced on Monday the deficit right. figures and looking at them now, you know, $804 billion in 2018. But if we do nothing, looking at $1.5 trillion in 2018. Um, you also saw that the uh, Affordable Care Act or Obamacare repeal and replace did not happen. Is that something, those two things, do you think you'll continue to work on those in whatever yeah, you decide those, to do next? Those two things are one and the same. So uh, repealing and replacing Obamacare is entitlement reform. And that's the one big thing that I've always wanted to do that, you know, we still haven't done. But I'm proud of the fact that the House has done it. Um, the House did pass the biggest entitlement reform bill last year that Congress has ever considered. Maybe some, so of, your really allies proud will, of. some of your allies might think that you might need to run for the Senate then. Uh, yeah, if well, you yeah right. So that's, I do feel like we've done a lot to advance this cause. We're not there yet, but I think, I think we'll get there because we have to do this. Some feeling today that mm. are you perhaps abandoning the troops in the middle of a pretty tough midterm? Hmm. I think we're going to have a strong record to run on. We're going to have the resources to communicate our stories. So I feel very good about things. Plus, we've gotten a lot done. We did tax reform for the first time in a generation. We hmm. rebuilt the military from being hollowed out, which was really important. We've deregulated the economy, which is really helping the economy grow. We're on to workforce development and infrastructure. So we ran on an agenda in 2016. And we've been executing. We have a really good record to run on. Look, being Speaker of the House is a lot different than being a member of Congress. So that's a little different in this job. This job, because of it, requires a great deal of travel, mm -hmm. such to the point where I basically see my family um, my, on Sundays. And the small government conservative is sort of, um, in some ways, becoming uh, extinct. And you're leaving Congress, I certainly mm -hmm. adds to that. You know, President Trump and you have developed a good and healthy relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, you've come a long way from. So honestly, Dana, it's just knowing each other. We spend a great deal of time with each other. I'm having dinner with him tonight. Um, we speak on the phone constantly. You mentioned small government conservative. That's alive and well here in Congress in the House of Representatives. Again, we've passed over 500 bills here in the House. And we're passing the balanced budget amendment on Thursday. We're pass we've passed the budget to repeal and replace Obamacare, which would have saved trillions of dollars of debt reduction. Unfortunately, we have not been able to get all of these bills. But also, all these things that we fought for are alive and well here in the House. And by the way, we've gotten an incredible amount done. I mean, just, just the things we've already gotten done in the last 15 months is something that usually takes Congress four or five years to do. We're moving on to our workforce development agenda which is focused on streamlining career and technical education and getting people from welfare to work. Plus, we're going through our infrastructure agenda as well. So we've got a lot more work to do just this term. And those plans are in place. It's what we said we would do when we ran on the Better Way agenda. And that's what we're going to be executing in the weeks to come. Certainly, the Democrats took those workforce development rules that you, know, you want to put, put forward. Right. And they said that you were the kind of guy that would want to throw granny off the cliff. It's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do for the person who is stuck in poverty. It's the right thing to do for the economy and for our communities. And so I know we're on the right side of things. And that's, that's the next agenda we're going to be pursuing. Eternal DC gossip. That's that that's pretty much leaves at the end edge of, of the beltway. And I know we're all focused on executing the team. That's one of the reasons why I, I was take took comfort in making this decision, because I know there's a capable leadership team I can hand the gavel on to. Speaker of the House, Paul Ryan.